Okay, if I can have your attention here in the media center, we'll begin today's media availabilities for the Fred's 250 here at Talladega with Kaz Growla, driver of the number 33 Stealth Chevrolet. Uh, Kaz, you won your first career race at a super speedway earlier this year at Daytona. Can you just talk about how your team's confidence level is heading into this week's cutoff race and being in your position? Well, I mean, I think we're pretty excited. Um, our truck had no damage from Daytona, so we're able to take the same one back. But a lot of things can happen on these restrictor plate races. So um, we're going into it optimistic, but I wouldn't necessarily say confident. I think um, a, a lot can happen and will happen. So hopefully we're on the right end of that. Great. With that, we'll open it up for questions for Kaz. If you have a question for Kaz, please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We'll start over on the left with Jerry. Jerry Jordan, KKMTires.net and PRN. Kaz, uh, talk about how you prepare for this race. I think I saw one of your Twitter posts that you look like you're studying notes and watching film. Does that really work when, uh, when the green flag falls? Um, we like to think it does. I mean, I, I feel like there are certain things you can prepare for, so why not prepare for them? But you're right, as soon as the green flag falls, no matter how much of a plan you have with your teammates, no matter how much you think you know the video, um, everything changes as the race progresses anyway so um, for me um, you, you get out there with Johnny Sauter and Matt Crafton who have uh, who knows how many plate races under their belt and so their their mental notebook of what to do has just grown so when they have a situation in front of them they immediately know what to do their instinct in that tenth of a second decision is just really good so as a rookie you're trying to watch video and kind of build up your your notes in your head so that when you're presented with a situation and you only have that short amount of time to make a decision hopefully you make the right one because when you make a wrong one here that it'll screw your race up pretty pretty big and and a lot of other people's too we have more questions for cat we'll go to chris over here to the right chris knight catch com Kaz, with the stage racing playing in effect in tomorrow's race you guys can't just hide in the back and hope that the big one happens and you guys avoid it and transfer on so what is your strategy get out front and stay there or what are you guys planning to do well like i said not everything goes to plan but our plan is pretty simple we just want to win the three stages all three of them so you know we'll see how close we can get to that plan <laughs> any additional questions for kaz here in the media center We'll go to Dustin then Claire. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. What's what's the biggest challenge to this type of racing for you? Well, for me, this this just isn't something you can grow up doing. I mean, road courses are obviously my background, but I've done plenty of short tracks and I hadn't done any mile and a halfs before this year, but now I've done a few of those. Um, but plate racing, I've only done Daytona, and there's really no way to get plate racing experience other than just doing it. And you kind of get thrown to the wolves out there because you can't even really practice it during practice. It's really just the race. So Daytona uh, in the ARCA car was my first experience on a plate track, and then in the truck, it's a whole different animal still. So for me, I... I'm still a complete rookie at this. I really have no idea what I'm doing, but hopefully, like I did at Daytona, I'll figure it out each lap. I've got 94 to do that, and um, all that matters is you're leading the last one. So I've got 93 laps of practice on Saturday. What surprised you at Daytona, and what is the surprise Well, I mean, obviously GMS Racing gave me a really fast truck, and that helps. Um, we had a good pit strategy. We worked well with our teammates, and. Um, all of that's going to be necessary this weekend, too, to stay up front. And to me, if you can just stay up front at the end and you can be in the top five like we were at Daytona at the end, I mean, it could go either way. It may go in your favor. It may not. You may just finish fifth. But um, if you're not up front, the chances of you being able to get that win are, are slim to none. So it's all about just keeping yourself in the best position you possibly can. And, and from there, um, just letting whatever's going to happen happen. Claire, go ahead. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. So can you be more specific about how you learn while you're driving? You said you have no idea what you're doing. So what do you edge out? What do you, you know, what are you careful of? How do you possibly, it sounds so crazy to say that you can learn while you're doing that. Well, you watch the cup races, and I would say the two best at it would be Dale Jr. and Brad Keselowski at blocking from the lead and that's the kind of it's it's different things like that it's basically a dance out there and it's all timing and so when you're brand new my first laps at Daytona 
I don't have the confidence or the knowledge to be able to do that. But the more you stay out there, you start gaining some confidence, you, you understand the runs that people are getting, and so you can, you can have better timing. And that's really what it's all about, because anytime there's a big one, it's because somebody messed up the timing. So for me, as the laps go on, I start to get more comfortable with that and uh, hopefully make the moves at the right time. So even as a professional race car driver who's talented, are you at times terrified while you're learning it? Uh, Daytona, I was terrified for about 99 laps there. And then uh, out of turn two, I was really terrified and then happy. So <laughs> hopefully we can get close to that this weekend. Chris, go ahead. Kaz, uh, when you, being a rookie and whatnot, when it comes to restrictor plate racing, who are you leaning on? to for support or guidance or suggestions even is there a veteran that you talk with maybe not at the track or away from the track or is there someone that you deal with as far as you like your team is like johnny Sauter. yeah i mean uh, of course johnny Sauter. we I, I lean on him a lot he's a really good plate racer as as we know and he's a teammate so we work together quite a bit in the race but uh, actually i spent some time this week with todd bodine who uh, I think is the winningest truck series driver on plate tracks, or at least here, don't quote me, but I think so. Um, and, and he knows a lot about this stuff. So uh, between the two of them, we've, we've talked a lot, we've gone over video and um, prepared as well as I possibly can going into the weekend. Any additional questions for Kaz here? Kaz, thanks for the time and uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank you.